world is small, but it ain't that small. There's plenty room for you and me and all. So why this bickering with our for a few meters more Even a few kilometers Or say another mountain and river Don't you feel rather small? Or to St. Peter, all the stuff we did on earth to bring pain and to suffer. Oh, dear man! Let me tell you something just go and hang yourself on the hammock. Between the shadowing coconut graceful tall trees Enjoy some cake and tea Children, while our life is tainted with all evil, 
While our survival's at the cost of others' extinction. What is the mark of the chosen? Is it just the blessing on your hands? Be it from animals or men. My dear brothers, I wanted to write you a long, loving letter with thousands of questioning words, but I am dumbfounded watching the madness of it all.
Munich Red Cross, Elsa speaking. How may I direct your call? Oh, I see. Well, I could definitely tell you how you can get more involved with our humanitarian work, doctor. <laughs> well, actually, it might be better if you just came down and picked up the literature yourself. <laughs> We're at 127 Hegelstrasse. Oh, your wife is in the area? Never mind, I'll mail them to you. Where's Todd? <clears throat> oh, who knows? Well, then here, you can start on these. Oh, good lord. New arrivals, Vietnamese mostly. <sighs> More aboard people. Dozens of them. All right, bright eyes. You got any bright ideas what we're going to do with your new friends? It is done. I have reorganized three storage rooms, found space for three dozen bunk beds. Oh, you're astounding. What exactly is her official job description around here? Interpreter, and that is it. Sometimes I think she's running for Director General of the International Red Cross. Oh, no, that's not true. I just want to be helpful. These refugees have lost everything. If I hadn't left Vietnam to study abroad by sheer chance and good luck, I could have been one of them. Do you mm. see? Hey, do you Thank want some you. tea? It's chrysanthemum, that stuff you gave me. Yes, please. Thank you. <laughs> Lovely. So what's next for you today? Escorting refugees to the hospital, picking them up in the afternoon. Oh, why don't you pick me up one of those cute doctors while you're at it? <laughs> oh, my poem! So, did he like it? Oh, not exactly. And by the way, you're fired. What? As a ghost writer, you make an excellent vegetarian chef. <laughs> Your poem was so sweet, he did not believe for a minute that I could have written it. Slightly humiliated, I admitted that it was yours, and now he wants to meet you. Oh, Elsa, I knew this was a bad idea from the beginning. No, 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 no. I need a new one for a new prospect, a poem that sounds just like me. All right, let me see what I have. <clears throat> Here's one. If there wasn't you in life, where to would I have gone? Maybe to a monastery. But there I must be so lonely, like a nun without a monk. A nun? <laughs> Me? Come on, be serious. Sorry, love. Try me again tomorrow. What was his name, anyway? Which one? You know, your would-be doctor, husband, benefactor? Uh, Rolf Reinhardt, chief of epidemiology. Aiming high. Yeah, you know, I got a thing for powerful men, Tom, and the powerful Mercedes 450 SLs, they tend to drive. <laughs> but I am done with doctors, they are too busy for me. I've moved on to Heinrich, the high financier. <laughs> Aw, Elsa, you and your obsession with men. It all seems beside the point to me. Beside the point? Oh, you could have any man you wanted with that gorgeous face and that huge heart of yours. Well, maybe that's just my problem. What can I do with my heart? This little heart of mine. So little and so fine. This little heart of mine. me so much daily with every misfortune I see what can I do for the people what can I do for the world always full of trouble always full of sorrow what can I do with my heart this drive me absolutely crazy. You want to take care of the whole world, but you won't let someone take care of you. But Tom, they're asking for you in the barracks. Thank you. Oh, oh. Tomorrow, <laughs> a poem that sounds exactly like you. <laughs> <laughs> Was 
Mustafa, how's your leg? Oh, thanks to you, so much better. Would you like to dance? I would love to. <laughs> <laughs> Woo. Oh. oh, careful. Oh, yes. You okay? Yes, sorry. <sighs> Thank you. Tom, Tom, this is the little girl. Hey, sweetheart. Why are you trembling, dear? I have dreams. Bad ones. Nightmares. Oh, you're safe here, sweetheart. Ton, what did we do so wrong to deserve this? Is it karma? Sometimes we cannot find the reason for everything that happens. Yeah, what will happen next? I don't know. But we are going to enroll you all in school, and you can be anything you want to be. I want to be a teacher. You'll be a wonderful teacher. <coughs> but for now, you need to rest. Just rest. She was a sole survivor of her boat. Father, mother, older brother, all killed before her eyes. Pirates, barbarians, club and knife the men, <coughs> rape the women, throw the babies overboard. Giant waves crashing down. 140 people hurled into the sea. I hung to a splinter of wood. God knows what happened to the others. But you were lucky. Because when my cousin came out of the water, his legs were eaten off by sharks. Oh, dear God. What can I do? If there is anything I can do to help them relieve of their suffering, I vow to help. My dear friends, in this new place you will find stability to reinvent your lives. And always remember that we will have the memory of our beautiful homeland to revisit in our hearts. My sweet sister, do you ever dream about yellow apricot blossoms by the terrace in past springs? I now win the west, so far away, missing all very much in my heart. Tom, let's get some coconuts after school! Yes, my mom gave me money. My treat. <laughs> my dear brother, We're so happy. Beside a bowl of spinach soup and lullabies, melodious as the rhythm of the swinging hammer. Oh, how I miss the thatched house of old, mother hair graying gentle as the cool shade of coconut grove. Your essay, Tan, is excellent. Very perceptive. Thank you, Teacher Bin. If it is good, it is entirely thanks to your excellent instruction. And sisters and brothers in the fragrant rice field and past adolescent love like a sad refrain. All swept away by the bloody river of war, dissolved in that evening of chaos.
teacher, sweet and gentle as the old plum tree in the village. A bullet had punctured his heart. Bright blood flowed heedlessly soaking the grass. Soft green blades turned to red mass. She was barely 18 in years. To the newlyweds, neighbors had just sent cheers. Soon, a promise of a new life to cherish. Mother and child both now perished. Two innocent souls, one straying bullet. On the riverbank, bodies decompose. Where will their drifting souls go? All swept away by the bloody river of war. Dissolved in that evening of chaos long ago. Tan, come quickly. Sweetheart. She's limp as a rag and she has a terrible fever. I'm taking her to the hospital. Come with me. Dr. Forrest, dial 118, please. Dr. Forrest, please dial 118. Nurse. I'm experiencing major resistance from patient Steinmetz on the ninth floor vis-a-vis -vis his post-op dietary needs. Steinmetz? Ninth floor? Affirmative. I've ordered high fiber, high protein, maximum roughage. This man needs to regain his strength. Oh, let me look. But Dr. Berghoff, Dr. Reinhardt specifically ordered sorbet and water for Steinmetz because of his gallstone procedure. It makes sense since ninth floor is pre-op. It's Steinberg on the 11th floor. That's post-op that needs high-cal roughage. Let me see that. Okay. Well then, mistakes can happen, granted. However, I must say that sorbet and water is not sufficient nutrition Excuse for any me, person Excuse me, if I may interject. Mr. Steinmetz, Dr. Berghoff, is in fact my patient, which means I am responsible for him, including his diet before a serious procedure. Yes, but as the dietitian for the Sorry to interrupt you again, but Mr. Steinberg, on the 11th floor, he's also my patient. And I'm getting concerned about his nutritional status by now. Oh, that's my job. Thank you, got it, okay. Help, please. I need to see a doctor right away. Yes, what is it? She's burning with fever. You know, she may be suffering from calcium magnesium depletion. Is she consuming sufficient quantities of dolomite? Would you please resume your duties, Dr. Berghoff? Thank you anyway, Klaus. Take a deep breath. Nurse, admit this child. Children's care intensive. I want a full workup and let me know the vitals. Yes, doctor. She'll be fine. I promise. Ton, I have a ringing toothache. Oh, yes, you poor man. Doctor, can the hospital refer us to a good dentist? Yes, I'll take care of that. Really? Well, you did ask for a good dentist, didn't you? That'd be me. Uh, you're not a... An MD? Of course I am, but I'm... Oh, but I'm also a dentist. And in my vast spare time after that, I'm chief of epidemiology. Nurse, I'll see this man momentarily in room four, please. You're Dr. Reinhardt. Guilty as charged, Rolf Reinhardt. Have we met? No, but Elsa Mannheim is my very best friend in Germany. Ah, yes. Elsa and I had dinner recently. I still don't know your name. My name is Tan. Tan, it's a pleasure to meet you. If I remember correctly, Elsa had a poem that was written by her best friend. That would be you? I'm afraid so. So, Elsa has wonderful things to say about your work methods, and I would very much like to discuss with you the refugee problem here in Germany. I would welcome the chance to speak with you, Doctor. Excellent. Have dinner with me tonight. Tonight? Uh, forgive me. It would be an honor if you'd be available for dinner tonight. Might you be available? I think I would. I should tell you, it's my birthday. Mine too. Really? Yeah. <laughs> well, then we have to go someplace special. I should tell you I'm vegetarian. But fear not. I know where to get the best baba ganoush in all of Europe. Excellent. I'll pick you up at 7.30 at the Red Cross. All right then, doctor. I am very heartened to know that you're as concerned as I am about the refugee situation. Carla. Yes, doctor. What time is my last appointment? Seven o'clock. Cancel it. Cancel it? My world has just been turned upside down. in the lovely kingdom it is someone here I could love my heart wouldn't be here if she were not maybe it's the way that she smiles maybe it's the joy 
Dessert. No, thank you. I couldn't. Thank you, Ferdinand. Oh, and Ferdinand, everything was delicious. Ah. <laughs> so, did you like your food? Isn't it interesting? Well, I have to admit, to be honest, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Why so reluctant to say so? Is it only because it's new, different, not what you're used to? Good point. I mean, I find you new. And different. And quite frankly, very interesting. <laughs> Dr. Reinhardt. Please call me Rolf. I hear Dr. Reinhardt in the hospital 18 hours a day. All right. Rolf. One last thing about the refugees. Imagine if you can being suddenly without your culture, your village, your When entire... do I get to hear more about you? We must remember that if we are to help. Tan, properly... forgive me, but I fear that you've taken on too much. My heart breaks for what has happened to your people, but you, no one person can save them all. It's impossible. But I must try. Of course you must try. But your methodology is doomed to fail. There just, there aren't enough hours in the day. I fear that you will become a burned out woman in six months. You have to learn to simply let go. But the love I feel for them cannot possibly burn out. I know I cannot restore everything that is lost, but their souls survive. You're a doctor, you, you must know what I'm talking about. I'm in the business of healing bodies, Tom. I can't even begin to wonder what happens to their souls. Forgive me, but that sounds a little heartless. And I do not believe in any way that you're a completely heartless man. I saw it today with little Lynn. I'm a scientist, a realist. And you're a woman of what? Faith? Yes, of faith, the heart, scientists. Why can't you just let the head and the heart combine into one? Because, Tan, don't you see? Science is heartless. The facts are what they are. I exchanged the church for medicine because faith alone never cured a kidney disease or even fixed a tooth. That little child that you brought in today. Lynn. Lynn. Supposing Lynn were very ill and there was just nothing we could do to save her. Well, sometimes sick and weak people die. You just simply have to come to accept it. No, I do not have to accept it. Thank you very much for dinner and a very stimulating conversation. Will you excuse me, please? It's time for me to go. Not so suddenly. I'm going back to the hospital. At this hour? The hour doesn't matter. I'm going to sit with Lynn. Uh, but she'll be asleep. All the more reason for me to be there. What if she wakes up and has no idea where she is? Uh, let me at least call you a taxi. No, thank you. I look forward to the walk. But it's freezing out, and look how dark it is. On the contrary, there's a full moon. You must not have noticed. Waiter. Uh, yes, sir. Check, please. Uh, yes, sir. But first, some baklava. No, thank you. Just a check. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but first, some lingonberry cider on the house. No, thank you. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but first, uh, some advice. No. Advice? Uh, with your indulgence. Tarn is an extraordinary woman. One in a thousand, perhaps one in many millions. And you are well matched, and she likes you, and you like her very much. And on what do you base that brilliant observation? 34 years in the restaurant business, sir. Forgive me, Herr Doctor, but just now to let her go, a very foolish thing. Waiter. Yes, sir. Check, please. Yes, sir. And call me a very fast cab. Yes, sir. How 
sweet your smile only for me only for me dr reinhardt Shh. she's sleeping what are you doing here your very smart friend ferdinand called me a very fast cab but i still don't Shh. I needed to see you again, Tan. Right away. You were right about Lynn. You were right, and I was wrong about all of it. I didn't mean to... Shh. Rolf, my heart is racing. <laughs> um, how long have you been experiencing these symptoms? They came on, very suddenly. A contagious condition. There's a cure, but it's risky. Come outside with me. <laughs> there, the moon. I thought you never noticed the moon. I didn't, until I jumped in a taxi and I raced across town in the dark with my head hanging out the window looking for you. I needed the moon to help me see. Don't you see? I feel like I've known you since before the moon was even born. That long? Do you believe in reincarnation? Tonight, I only believe in love. Moon of mine, how sweet your smile, only for me. Oh, how happy. No one to see, no one to know Our love for each other Though you care for all Though you care for all No one can smile so sweet and long You are the one, you are the only one And when I saw you stayed still and hung above the mountain. You listen and dance till my heart's content, endearing and lovely. You are the beauty of the galaxy. You share the pain and the joy with me. Shine my path in the dark You soothe my heart when I'm in pain When I'm in pain Good heavens, where did that come from? This belonged to my grandmother. Right before she died, she made me promise that I would always carry this around with me in my left coat pocket on the outside chance that I might find her. Find who? The woman I want to marry. That's so romantic. I always thought it was utterly absurd. Until now. Because we are
Yes, dear, very sweet. Top to bottom. <laughs> what, what I do? I'm not doing anything. What's wrong with you? Nothing's wrong with me. It's just Don and Rolf. They're so beautiful. They make me feel so happy. <laughs> oh, cake. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you Dr. and Mrs. Rolf Reinhardt. <laughs> Maestro. Myself. Honey, we discussed this this morning, and we both I know, agreed. I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Rolf. I, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're Rolf's parents, and well, we promised we wouldn't embarrass him by giving silly speeches at his wedding. Yeah, yeah but now it's too late. Uh, anyway, here goes. My son was always a loner, pursuing his real passion, medicine. He didn't have time for love until he met our darling Tom. Thank oh. you. I'm sure Rolf has told you that love is an irrational thing. But now he's done the most irrational thing imaginable. He's gotten married. Yes, they say a man is not complete until he's married. Then he's finished. Oh, oh, you get it? I'm sorry. <laughs> Tom. Those of us who know and love Rolf see something new and warm and open in his face, especially when he looks at you. Yeah. Thank you. Oh. All right, Mr. Comedy, you're on. Well, uh, did you hear the one about the proudest father in the world and the happiest father-in-law? Uh, what happened to the punchline? Oh, you want the punchline? Here's the punchline. <laughs> Tom, I want you to meet one of my best friends in the world. He works with me at the hospital. This is Rajiv and his lovely wife, Greta. You are the most radiant bride I have ever seen. Thank you. No, no, I mean it. Your eyes. There's a Mardi Gras going on behind your eyes. <laughs> Really? <laughs> Greta, don't terrify the poor girl on her wedding day. My wife is an artist, Tan, a painter. She forgets to mention that before she launches into her rhapsodies over new faces. A real artist. I would be so honored if you would model for me. The honor would be mine. Ah, oh, I have a feeling we are going to get on famously. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, you gorgeous, gorgeous things! Oh my god, this wedding is beautiful! You are both beautiful! Just look at you! I wish you were wearing this dress. Oh, no, enough of that nonsense. You two are a match made in heaven. Oh, you're just gonna be so happy and share little secrets and joyfully climb the little ladder of life together, hand in hand. Oh, and every night when you come home from work, he'll be there waiting for you all tall and weary and handsome. <laughs> oh, and you'll see his stethoscope hanging on a little peg in the hallway and he'll say to you, hello, darling, and how was your day? And oh, my God, I'm just so happy for you. I guess Sweetie, time to throw the bouquet! Right here. 
I'm ready. Bring it on. Dr. Kravitz, you have a visitor in the main lobby. Dr. Kravitz, a visitor in the main lobby. Nurse, are you sure that Dr. Reinhardt and Ton are coming back to work today? That's what it says on the schedule, so it might be true. Well, you know, their honeymoon was officially over two days ago. And then there is that one day's travel from Lake Como, which would have been yesterday. Of course, one must not discount jet lag. Are you concerned at all about their jet lag? I'm nearly frantic about their jet lag. But somehow I am able to push that aside and soldier on with my tasks at hand. Yeah. I'm not so much concerned about Dr. Reinhardt. He wouldn't know a tropical parasite if it bit him. <laughs> if only. But Tan. Oh, Tan. <laughs> She's so delicate. Oh, even though I know she's really not. You know, she would have to have the strength of 20 women to survive what she's been through. Even so, I made her this cake. You what? Yeah, for jet lag and a, and a welcome back thingy. You know, it's, it's flourless celery and rutabaga with caramelized leek frosting. <laughs> I know. Do you have any idea what they serve on airplanes these days? She must have been used to eating dreck. Klaus. I mean, Dr. Berghoff. No, I mean Klaus. I think you should back off a bit from the newlyweds. Agree at all? No. <laughs> well, frankly, no. I'm just trying to be, you know, friendly. Friendly is good. I tell you what, how about you meet me in the nurse's lounge after our next shift and you can feed me some of that Caramelized leek frosting. I'm gonna go put this in her locker. Klaus! I know, don't light the candles this time. Is anybody ever gonna forget that? You two, you need to go to the ENT doctor. <laughs> Nurse, could you escort them to the ENT? Sure, Tom, when you get a second, two more refugee buses have just arrived. I'll be right there. My chest is burning and my head is killing me. I think I'm going to faint. Nurse, we need some help here. Tom, Tom, I need you. I don't understand a word this refugee is saying. Tom, will you get a chance? I've just come from the children's ward. Uh, I'll talk to you later. Yes. Your patient, Lynn. Is everything okay? Uh, she's fine, but she wants to see you. Oh, this is not a good moment. Tom, take a break. You deserve it. Go. Thank you, doctor. Why, hello. You're looking chipper. Why are you late? I beg your pardon? To class? Oh, to class. I'm very sorry, teacher, but my school bus driver got lost, you see, and we ended up in an entirely different country. What country? I'm not entirely sure, but it might have been Zanzibar. Is it far from here? Pretty far. And that explains why I am so late, you see. That's OK. But now, you have to give the entire class an oral report on Zanzibar. Oh, all right. <clears throat> Zanzibar. 
an island nation founded 12 million years ago by a family of great blue whales. They love to spend their summers there frolicking in the cool mountain waterfalls. Whales don't frolic in waterfalls. You're just too smart for me. Hello, darling. Hey. Hello, Lynn. Doctor, doctor, doctor. Oh, I'm so glad you're feeling better today, sweetheart. Would you excuse Town and me for one moment? She's growing stronger every day. Yes, it's wonderful, but she has a test result here that I'm not at all happy about. What is it? Tuberculosis. Fairly advanced and very contagious. I'm ordering her complete isolation. Isolation? She needs to get out in the sunshine, see other children, learn to forget what she's been through. Yes, Tom, that would be ideal, but this is a hospital, and there are other patients here that are at risk. Maybe she could live with us. No. That's completely inappropriate. She'll need constant monitoring. Will I be able to visit her? Yes, under highly restricted circumstances. I cannot let you get too close. Too close? I love her. You love her too, don't you? Of course I do. But I worry about your health, Tom. It's too risky. Risky? I grew up surrounded by war. I understand risk. There must be some sort of compromise for Lynn. No, there is no compromise in this instance. In all likelihood, Lynn will be fine. At which point you'll see that I was right. Come on, we're both exhausted. Let's drop the subject. I won't! I can't! Dr. Reinhardt, room 649, yeah. Dr. Reinhardt, room 649. Rolf, I'm sorry. Let's not fight. I'm Let's not looking for a second opinion, Tom. I'll see you tonight. Rolf! Dear Dr. Darling, in recognition of our two-day anniversary of not speaking to one another, a poem. I set out, spreading my wings to the heavens. I proceed to call on you, the one I cherish. The earth is vibrant, exulting in our reunion, an uncommon day of happiness, together as on our first meeting. Let us overlook the nights of our distress, Sing on full moon nights, chorus on breezy days. Life is an aromatic flower garden. Oh, mine. Oh, mine. Carla, find someone to cover my shift. I have a date with my wife, but she doesn't know it yet.
up with me? Ha! You can't keep up with me. Woo! Ever try this one? <laughs> no problem. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Oh. I'm sorry. I know not to take in vain the name Jesus or Buddha. Two very important men in your life, after me. They're not men, they're masters. I know, I know, your faith keeps you grounded. A higher power keeps all of us grounded. <laughs> well, gravity grounds me. Without faith, people fall. <laughs> Take a leap of faith with me! <laughs> I adore you, my magnificent man of science. And you enchant me, my poetical, passionate muse. Meal, delicious or what? I can't believe I love my vegetables so much. My mother would be so proud. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think, Regime? Is she a keeper? Oh. oh, well, that rather depends, doesn't it? On what? On her feelings about you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't give me that. She's dying to marry me, aren't you, oh. sugar cane? Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Tan is teaching me her cooking techniques. Oh. It's fascinating. She's a brilliant teacher. <laughs> With my bank account, she'd marry me if I was Quasimodo himself. <laughs> oh, Tan, we have to set a date for my next cooking lesson. I need to learn how to make that eggplant thingy. Ugh, scrumptious. Oh, Elsie, you should hmm? come too. Thursday at three? Oh, perfect. Oh, yeah. She's pretty. Dumb, but pretty. Oh. I, for one, do not find Miss Mannheim by any stretch of the imagination to be dumb, Heinrich. <laughs> Don't get all women's lib on me. Women's lip, I like to call it. <laughs> I mean it like it's flattering. She's, she's pretty, dumb but pretty. Now, mind you, I could have a college graduate if I wanted one, but that's the trick, isn't it? Dumb, smart, skinny, fat, finding that perfect combination. And I like them dumb and pretty. Oh, um, Tom, I almost forgot. That book that we talked about last week, I brought it for you. Wonderful! <laughs> Lives of the Himalayan Yogis. Is that Yogi Bear or Yogi Bear? <laughs> yogis, Heinrich. Himalayan Yogis. But really, nobody expects you to have ever heard of such a thing. Nope. Nobody expects you to be anything, darling, but the stupid, vulgar, drunk, benighted boor that you obviously, disgustingly are. Hey, now, hey, what kind of a thing is that to say? How dare you say stuff All like right, that to party's me? party's over. Good night, Heinrich. Good night, everyone. Heinrich, we're gonna send you back to your home in your nice, warm bed. He won't remember anything in the morning. Crazy. <laughs> Why don't you stay here with us tonight, Elsa? No, I think I need a little fresh air, but thanks. Tom. I'm just so, so sorry. Oh, it's okay. <sighs> I live days of deception, professing love that I don't feel, sweet utterances from rosy lips, passionate words from an ice-cold heart. I indulge in many illusions, day and night. Keeping up with the Joneses This ephemeral body burning with passion How I writhe, plunging into the fire I pass many shores, clear and muddy Washing my face, then painting it again Desiring fame, fine houses 
enjoy this life I've abandoned noble ideas. <sighs> After many struggles, I awake suddenly. Is that all there is? What does it matter if you extra tens of years chasing gain with efforts so dear? What shall I do in the days ahead when hell's is luster and youthful rosiness fades? When breathing ceases, is this death? today is this life or is death close by So much stronger you'll feel in the morning if now you just go to sleep. So close your eyes, my darling. It's hard to breathe. I know, sweetheart. But just close your eyes and sleep will come. Miss Tan, when they died, where did my mother and father and big brother go? I don't know, sweetheart. But wherever it is, it's someplace very, very beautiful. Like Zanzibar? Maybe so. So just close your eyes, my darling, and dream about Zanzibar. Oh, I wish I had the answer for her. Oh, I wish. I had the answer to all the suffering in this life. I work, and I sleep, and I work some more, and always I am praying, putting the pain in my writing, giving my love to the children, the lost ones, every last one of them. But it isn't enough. Nothing changes the suffering. Dear God, show me a sign you exist. Dear Buddha, let me see you. Let me know your compassion, your power, because I need strength, God. I need strength. Not for me, but for Lin. Why the endless suffering? Where is the everlasting remedy? I know in my heart there is one, but where is it? 
Won't you show me a sign? I think we should stop for today. Why? What's going on? Nothing. Tan, it's my business to see things in people's faces. Something pretty serious is going on. Lynn isn't getting any better. In fact, she's getting worse. I'm so sorry. I'm scared she's going to die. Of course you are. I feel my faith is faltering. I feel lost. You know, ever since I was a little girl, I wanted to be a painter. Art was my enchantment. But it was only a dream. So I grew up, I got practical, and I went to med school because my father was a doctor, but also because medicine was important, unlike, say, art. I met Rajiv, we fell in love, we got married, and we both started practicing but then a couple years later, this little voice started waking me up in the middle of the night, telling me that I needed to be painting. I ignored that little voice, but it got louder, more adamant. And then one day I woke up and I knew, I simply knew that I had to go to Paris. Paris? What did you think of that, Rajiv? Absolutely opposed, hated the idea. <laughs> so he stayed home. But I had to honor something that felt bigger than myself, Tan. A spirit, that little voice. I needed to go to Paris to study with the, the living masters of my art. Otherwise, I'd be betraying something in my soul. You were very brave to go. Honestly? Yes, I was. But let me tell you the best part. Yes, going to Paris, I became a better artist than I otherwise possibly could have been but I became a better person. Tom, tell me what's wrong. I don't know. I'm not a painter like you. I'm, I don't know what I am. Well, you're a deeply spiritual woman. I know, I know it sounds blasphemous, but God and Buddha, they seem so far away. My country, Tan, India. India has been a crucible of suffering for centuries. We have struggled with your question more than most. Where is God in the midst of all this suffering? And? And perhaps because of that, a few, very few wise masters have learned the answers to that elusive question and, and live to enlighten others. Living masters? In India? I don't know if I will have the courage to go. You were very strong. I had the courage to take the first step. That's all I had. Search high and low for a little love. Search high and low for a little love. To bestow on all beings.
Tom, that was Rolf on the phone. He thinks perhaps you should meet him at the hospital. Is it Lynn? Yes, it's Lynn. Is everything okay? You should go. Go now, Tom. <sighs> Save her, Tom. I'm so sorry. No one blames you, darling. It almost felt like she were ours. Our own daughter. Yes. Let's start our own family, Tom. Let's have our very own child. That's a beautiful idea. But there is something I need to tell you. I must go to India. India? Come with me. I feel it. It's my calling. I must go. You're, you're not thinking clearly, Tan. The way to cope with Lin is to move ahead. Not run away to India! This isn't running away! What is the meaning in her death, her suffering? I must find out. Come with me, Rolf. You spent ten years to become a physician. I'm only asking for two. No. My work. And I don't want you to go either. I need you here beside me. I need your blessings for this. You're asking for blessings from a man who has no faith. It's not true. You said you believe in the power of love. I believe in the power of my love for you. Then how about this? That God loves us all. That if we love each other as strongly as that, we can conquer anything, even disease. This is your path, Tom. It's not mine. But it's our lives. Oh, I love you, Tom. But my life is here. Then I must go alone. Please don't do this. I don't want to lose you. I have no choice. When you come home, there will only be grass and flowers greeting your footsteps. The garden sheds her evening dew. The house bows weighed down with loneliness, murmuring farewell. Surrendering to ignorance and misery I know you've been suffering in golden bonds Longing to be free world of woe, where I must pine, and where you, my love, have to taste sorrow. Please lift your heart out of the blue web, so my mind will Yeah!
please. I need directions. And How can I help you? <gasps> you are a pilgrim. You are observant. Um, I'm trying to find my way to Rishikesh. Do you know the way? And please, don't say straight ahead. It's a foothills of the Himalayas. I can show you the path on foot. It is that way. Thank you. Mm-hmm. I'm so grateful to you. Um, can I offer you something for your kind assistance? Are you in need of some kindling for your stove? Well, no, but then best to save for someone who does. Of course. I would like to offer you something, however. You will need this. No, I couldn't possibly. Thank you so much. I am going to call you Smiling Step. Smiling Step? <laughs> yes! If only you could see your face! <laughs> <laughs> oh! So sorry. Ah, do not talk to me! For Ingi! <laughs> <laughs> she is of the Brahmin caste, my dear. Only those of the same caste are allowed to touch her. But how is one to know? Very difficult, Pilgrim. My advice? Not to touch anyone. <laughs> Thank you, Guruji. India is full of wonders and mysteries. Some dangerous, some not. <laughs> you are traveling alone? Yes. That I would categorize as dangerous. Well, it's just that I'm in a great hurry to get to the Himalayas. Ah, so it is enlightenment you seek. Yes, with every fiber of my soul. You want to learn to walk on water and fly in the air. (laughs) (laughs) No, I'm not looking for mystical powers. I want to help people, and I need enlightenment to know how best to do that. Beware, young woman in a hurry. You cannot do this alone. You will need help, a friend. A guide. (laughs) For example, the Himalayas are bitterly cold. Have you learned to more heat? Well, no. I don't even know what that means. Generating warmth from the solar plexus. uh, The only way to survive. (laughs) Oh, I thought if I kept walking, the exercise would keep me warm. I have so much to learn. But my dear, Do not make the mistake of falling into despair. I knew from the first moment I saw you, you were a special one. So many of my students are chasing physical attainments, not truly searching for the truth. I have traveled to every corner of India, learned with great masters and attained great enlightenment. Goodbye and good luck. Wait, Guruji, you said students. You are a teacher. I would very much like to learn your path. We welcome you. My temple is in the mountains on the other side of the river. Too far to walk. (laughs) I would gladly pay for your bus fare if you'd allow me. I accept. Come, let us begin our journey. This is Dawn. Welcome her. <laughs> Forgive their rough manners, my child. They are overly stimulated from a long day of study and prayer. <laughs> Something to drink, food. <laughs> you are hungry. 
famished, actually. Excellent. To, to nourish the soul, one must not neglect the body. But first, uh, a light reaper, something cool to drink, uh, a little wine, perhaps. Just a cup of water will be perfect. A cup of water. <laughs> yeah, a cup of... Ah, yes, a cup of water. A cup of... My young sadhu, come here. Uh, for the young lady, it shall be a cup of water. But, 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 for her, it shall be a special uh, elixir of welcome. <laughs> yes, master. <laughs> Later, you shall have my room there in the back, and, uh, uh, and I shall sleep here with the others. I couldn't. I wouldn't want to. Uh, nonsense! 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 <laughs> Do your hair. Thank you. Ah, oh, I have so much to learn about you, my child. Your spiritual journey thus far. I want to know all about it. Hold nothing back. If I am to be your teacher, you must trust me. I have questions. Many, many questions. It shuts aloof and cold The curtains are drawn I know you are in the palace Just can't open the door I think one day I'll bring along A big hammer I'm tired Heartbroken Have no more patience Yeah, yeah. 
Yes. Where? Where is she? <laughs> you idiots! Where is she gone away? After her! Oh, dear God, what prey am I supposed to learn from that? For this, I left my warm and safe home. My beautiful and beloved husband. Oh God, you know I put my faith in you. But where are you? Dawn. What? Dawn. Who's calling me? I'm over here. <gasps> it's Klaus. Klaus? Klaus Burgo. <gasps> this is the craziest miracle ever. <laughs> Running into you in India? Hundreds of thousands of square miles, hundreds of millions of people, what are the odds? Oh, shush! What are the odds? I mean, I've escaped from a bunch of dangerous conmen. She, she can't it. possibly have gone much further than this! Spread out, boys! Give me your coat. Oh. You have binoculars, too? I don't need that. Okay. Okay, they're getting real close. We should... Tom. Tom! Where did you go? Todd! I'm down here! Oh! oh. What's this? Another pilgrim no doubt? You! Idiot! Wake up! What? We are looking for a woman. Small. Attractive. In a hurry. Have you seen her? <laughs> no. Ah! <laughs> I mean this! Heading that way. That way, boys! <laughs> <laughs> Are they gone? Not yet. I don't hear anything. Uh, okay, now they're gone. Klaus, you're my hero. You were brilliant. <laughs> oh, I was pretty good, wasn't I? Listen, yeah. are you all right? I'm fine. Um, Klaus, I think you just saved my life. <laughs> you know what? We got to get out of here. Yes, please, but where? Uh, there was an ashram not too far back. I think. You think? Yeah, well, maybe it was a little far back. You see, I've been on a bird watching expedition. Perhaps we can place. find them together. Oh, okay. I have to ask. I mean, it is a miracle you're here, but what on earth are you doing in India? Oh, uh. <laughs> same as you, Ton. I'm just broadening my circle of spiritual understanding. You know, when I got fired from the hospital in Munich, I thought to myself, well, this is not good. But then. I saw this as the opportunity that it could be. We gotta go. Okay. your eyes ever sparkling do you miss me darling do you miss me darling longing for someone far away living an empty life I miss your soft and beautiful lips Darling, do you miss me, darling? The river continues flowing, indifferent. The lonely rose bush is cheerless. I dream of our glorious time together, holding the sing. Seagulls 
of flying low boats toss and turn the bay this evening seems so distant do you miss me darling Touching scene. <laughs> a man, all alone, very late at night on a lonely bridge, singing pretty songs to the moon. <laughs> Hello, Elsa. You startled me. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought doctors were unflappable, but please don't fly away like all the pigeons do whenever I come near. I'm actually grateful for the company. It's usually pretty empty out here. You come here often? Uh, lately, I do. I see. You miss her terribly, don't you? What have you heard? Has she written to you? A note from the airport saying she arrived safely. I'm sure she misses hearing from you. My life here, so much the same. Nothing significant to report in any case. Except for the terrible loneliness, Rolf. Especially late at night. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, oh, wow. Oh, wait till my therapist hears about this. Oh, boy. Oh, it's gotten so bad that I've taken to making out with marble statues in the middle of Munich in the middle of the night. Elsa, you know how in love with my wife I am. Oh, Rolf, I'm a horrible person. No, 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 please. Oh, no, Rolf. Oh, God, I have something to show you. It is a letter from India. It's from Klaus. You remember Klaus? From the hospital. Anyway, he and I have become pen pals, and, uh, well, he and Ton, they are staying at an ashram somewhere. So she's okay. Uh, there's a return address if you'd like to write to her. Or, why don't you just go? What are you doing standing around here? <laughs> Rolf, um, please give my love to Ton. And you will never mention what happened here tonight, ever, okay? Good night. Uh, goodbye. Ooh. As nights pass and days go by, I miss only you all the time. Miss me, Tears in your eyes. 
India's hot. <laughs> to become one with the planet, one must become a tree. <laughs> Who's one? Yeah. Uh, uh. Oh, I get it. When you fold it, his chin becomes a butt. <laughs> That's funny. Guilty pleasures? Oh, oh no, 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 no. This, this, this isn't mine. Oh, ton. Klaus, your secret is safe with me. Go gently with yourself, my gentle friend. And look, flour from the market for homemade chapatis. Delicious. <laughs> So, uh, Ton, how are you sleeping these days, you know, up there on the roof? My five zillion star hotel? I sleep like a lamb in pasture. Well, still, all in all, it can't be very safe. You know, there's scorpions everywhere. And it rains. A lot. And, um... And there's room, you know. Inside. <laughs> Where in that tiny cot? Yes. Klaus. Oh, no, no, I'd, uh, I'd sleep on the floor, you know, with a, with a mat and a, and a blanket. <laughs> Klaus, how can I make you understand what I mean when I say I absolutely adore you? And I'm going to keep sleeping on the roof. In any case, it will soon be time for me to be pressing on. What, what, why do you have to press on? Oh, it, it's beautiful here, and, and we're eating well. And, and growing wiser every day, just living, just being, aren't we? You know that woman who gave me her walking stick? She called me Smiling Step. She knew, I think, that my journey would be long, but joyful. And there is this inner joy within me that wants me to keep going forward. If I were to find a true master, I have to climb higher into the Himalayas. Smiling Step. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Meanwhile, I have to finish shopping. So, uh, if you're hungry, have some sprouts. Oh, I will, because I love these. Um... <sighs> oh, Ton, you forgot your book. You... <laughs> if it wasn't for you in life, where would I have run? Maybe to a monastery. I can do better than that. If it wasn't for sprouts in life, I would have gone to the moon. Sitting there miserable like a dog without bones. No. If it wasn't for sprouts in life, I would have been so lonesome. Think of the sunflower without the shining sun If it wasn't for sprouts in life Oh, where would I have run? Maybe to a monastery But there I would be so lonely Like a monk without a nun Monastery, but there I would be so lonely, like a monk.
without a nun! Dr. Reinhardt? Hello, Klaus. Where did you... How did you... Find you? The usual way. An airplane, a bus, a water buffalo, my own two legs. I travel equipped with three things that have proven sufficient. My passport, a handful of traveler's checks, and this letter that you sent to Elsa. Oh, um... Did you not think that she would show it to me? Well, I, I... And did you not think that I would make note of the return address that you so dutifully scrawled on the envelope? But you weren't there. I showed her picture at every ashram and bank and post office between here and Delhi. Well, um, Where is she? Who? My wife. Oh. Oh, she's not here. She's, uh... She's out, gathering food for our supper. So she does live here? Yes. With you? Yes. With you? Yes, uh. <laughs> We're both on the same spiritual path, you know. We met. I helped her. At, uh, saved her, actually, from a particularly dangerous situation, and she was very grateful. Go on. And I think, no. I know that she does not want to go back to Germany with you, Doctor, if that is what you are assuming. That is none of your business. No, 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 it is my business because I'm in love with her. And she you. Yes? <laughs> she adores me. She told me so. I don't believe it. Oh, it's like a bad dream. Oh, what a fool I've been to have gone on this exhausting, idiotic, wild goose chase. Do me a favor, Klaus. Tell Tan I was here. Show this to her. It'll prove what inspired my visit. I'll be back in Munich. Oh, Klaus. I'm back. Oh, so quickly. Hi. <laughs> hey, what's this? Your letter to Elsa from Germany? How did this get here? Uh, Rolf. <laughs> Rolf brought it. <laughs> Rolf? Here? When? Oh, just now. Well, where is he? No, 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 he left. I, I sent him away. What? Okay, he left. He, uh, he was pretty angry. But why? Because we're living together. That's ridiculous! Did you tell him the truth that I sleep on the roof and you're here temporarily until you find your own hut? I told him the truth. I told him I was in love with you, Tan. Klaus. You great big idiot. I know. Why did you do such a thing? Because it's the truth. Because it's... It's pure. It's real. And because... Because I was afraid. I was afraid that if I didn't tell him I was in love with you, he was going to take you away, and I would never see you again. Klaus, didn't I just tell you that I absolutely adore you? But Rolf is my husband, and I'm in love with him! I see. I see that. <laughs> Which way did he go, Klaus? That way. No, wait. That way. directions to the bus depot? Ah, oh, straight ahead. That's impossible. Follow the traffic circle two quarters round, make a hard left at the hotel, and go two more blocks. Bless you. Can't miss it!
One ticket to the airport, please. <clears throat> that. 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 On time. Airport? But I need to catch him. Please. Sorry, miss. Too late. That was our last one today. I missed him. I just missed him. He must have been so angry with me. And for no good reason. A silly, foolish misunderstanding. Didn't get a chance to explain or tell him how much, how much I love him. Happy birthday, darling. Happy birthday. I never left India. Something stopped me. It was you. I needed to see you. I've been searching for you for two days. I realized what a fool I've been. Still am a fool in love, Tom. So I never left India. You can be a very silly man, Dr. Reinhardt. Oh. I just needed to see you and to hold you. I've been completely miserable without you, Tan. It's as simple as that. You sweet, adorable man. What now? I don't care. Just as long as we're together. But your work, the new children's wing, you've been dreaming of that for years. Yes, it opens the day after tomorrow. You would love to be there. No. It couldn't be less important to me now, Tan. My life's work is loving you. Lead on and I will follow. But you're a doctor. Of course I'm a doctor. I'm also a dentist, remember? I mean, it's your life, your passion, your calling. I am on a different path now, Ton. This is my path, Rolf. You... Yes. So what do we do now? Carry on. How? Where? I'm continuing my journey up the Himalayas, and you, you're going back to Munich. So you couldn't come with me? No, my love. We both know this is just the truth. When will I see you again? Someday, I hope. I will love you always and forever, Tom. And I will love you forever and always. The time we spent together, I will always treasure. Do not forget our memory. Who says the world is ephemeral When we are together it's eternal 
dream and life merge in unison when our souls are one. The peace within is the peace without. Heaven will be here and now. For those who found true
once upon a time a true peace lover wandered around the many worlds in search of eternal happiness she walked over the face of the earth the suns the sat down and was about to enjoy her newfound bliss but suddenly Soon the firmament was studded with glittering teeth. Which are the stars today? They are to shine in the day and to rest us in the night to go to sleep. For all these seekers, the stars are. All right, did you enjoy the musical? We certainly have. It was so heart touching. It, it was, and, and very uplifting, don't you think? Definitely.
Ladies and gentlemen, at this uh, joyous occasion, it is our immense privilege to invite our very special guest of honor, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Let's now meet the real Tom. Hello, Supreme Master Ching Hai. Supreme Master Ching Hai, we wish you were here in person. We reserved a seat just for you. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Please, thank all involved for me, please, one more time. Thank you so much, thank you so much. We watched an extraordinary musical, The Real Love, which was inspired by your poetry and just a part of your amazing personal journey. And for that, we want to thank you. We all loved it. We really did. Supreme Master Ching Hai, would you care to give us your thoughts on the musical? Wow. You make our world more beautiful with the music. Uh, I, I've been watching it. I've been hiding to watch it because I didn't want to impose my presence on this beautiful occasion until it was all done. Wow, it's like a miracle. Uh, all these uh, great names, great musicians, great composers, directors come together to create such a magnificent masterpiece. They are all so kind and so elegant. Wow, it was not for having to meditate now long hours. I would trade anything to come to see this. I would trade anything. But I had to stay here in order to continue meditation unbroken. A few hours, okay, but not like two, three days. Thank you so much again. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, it's breathtaking. breathtaking. I'm sure the audience feels exactly the same as I do. Wow. My greeting, hugging, <laughs> embracing <laughs> to the great composers like Mr. Akasha, Mr. Doug Casaro, Mr. Don Pipping, Mr. David Shire, we met again, <laughs> and Mr. Bill County, who could not be here today, but I feel his love. He always has the talent of sending love, <laughs> even when he's not present. Thanks for your musical scores that really set our spirit soaring high and touch our hearts to the core. You really glorify love tonight. I appreciate all the kind words you have shared about my poems as well, personally and in the press. And I'm so honored that you wanted to bring to them the uplifting elements of song on this as on other occasions. And I thank you, Mr. David, for your music direction, as well as the orchestra musicians, so crisp, and so full of life. <laughs> that make us feel transported in time and space. Mr. Mark Norris, thank you as well for the genius choreography with dances of all kinds of styles that mesmerize us every second. I also appreciate you, Director Chris Shelton, for bringing the story to life so vividly <laughs> and movingly as you did, with all your detailed attention. I'm also deeply grateful for the government's kind support and the media's glorious comments. Thank you all from the bottom of my heart. I am touched also as an audience member by the work that so many professional artists poured into making this production, including all the greatly talented cast members, the guest stars, the all creative team and crew, such as the script writers, lighting technicians, costume and set designers, and the musicians. And I know you all have worked long hours 
together to make it the best. I am always grateful for the artists. What the artists do for our world, we cannot thank them enough. Without the artists, I mean all the artists, you know, composers, musicians, artists, actresses, actors, singers, dancers, <laughs> all these great and elegant people, kind-hearted, so pure and so loving. These artists, they are doing wonderful things for our world as they do for our innermost heart. So I want to applaud you, each of you, one by one, for the wholehearted effort and the love you have put into this gift. You have shared with us the world in the form of this musical. I truly appreciate the honor that all of you, the brilliant artists, the great musicians, exceptional actors, actresses, singers, the legendary composer, etc. All your effort. May God bless you. Do I have still a little time or my time is up? <laughs> it's okay? Should I continue? It's your show. Yes. Okay. So I just share with you a little bit <laughs> of my thoughts. Over two decades ago, Le Yin, one of the Olasis, meaning Vietnamese, famous composers, translated one of my poems into a musical song. At that time, I was not in the Himalayas yet. I was still a householder, you know. Uh, the poem was called Like the Drifting Cloud. And one decade later, I knew about it. <laughs> I mean, all that time I did not know he put my poem into music. Uh, many people knew it, I didn't know. And then another famed musician glorified another of my poem titled Passing by Your House into a musical song. Also, I did not know it until half a decade later. Since then, many more such lovely surprises kept coming. When uh, they asked me if they could use the, you know, the latest poem, uh, The Real Love, to make into a song, I thought, okay, another song. But I did not imagine that in such a proportion like this. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed even just to know about this program. All oh, these great people, I could not imagine. And all the lucky people in the audience there, face to face with these exceptional great artists, talents, musicians, composers, I can only envy you. You know, this is kind of once in a lifetime that we can see all these great people together in one cast, in one musical. I can only envy you. But thank you for coming. Thank you. I can never thank all of you enough for your incredible loving dedication and support to art and love. This is the real love, your love. Love is the most precious thing in this physical realm, so we must protect love, be it the love between a couple, between parents and children, between friends, Love between humans or love between animals? Love between humans and animals or between animals and humans? Be it even the love between plants and trees. They do communicate. They do love and protect each other, as scientists have proven. You read about them, you know. Real love is what we need to protect our world, especially now. Whatever we love will blossom. Whatever loves us makes us grow in happiness. But love is not just a vocabulary. Love is action, invisible and visible. Love can flourish or be destroyed even, though the essence of love can never be destroyed. 
There are deeds that can nourish love. There are deeds that can make love wither and die. I mean, physical love. I mean, the love in this realm. There are deeds that can make love grow. There are deeds that can make love diminish. We must cherish, treasure love if we find it, support it. We have to support it with our thoughts, our speech, and actions. In any relationship, there must be always give and take. For example, between couple, it is not enough just to say, I love you. We should always take care to respect and help each other like the first days, and even better every day. Knowing what the partner likes, we'll try to offer that. And knowing what the partner doesn't like, we'll try to avoid. Being considerate is the key to good relationship. Ah, listen to me, the one who left home. <laughs> But I know it works for you who want to keep your relationship. I'm just uh, indulging myself to voice a few opinions. Any differences we should discuss till both agree or compromise. It's not really difficult to keep a relationship happy and thriving if we have real love. Selfishness and ego are the number one love killers. And my Lord, don't we see or feel like that? And then when love is gone, we cry, we lament, we blame everything, everyone, including ourselves, and we could even punish ourselves with illness or even our life. But when we love on a bigger scale, for example, like our nation or our planet, or our world, then it's another story. That is the love like that of Jesus, of Buddha, Then we sacrifice personal happiness and personal love for others, be it humans or other species. Are you still there? So quiet, I thought I had put you to sleep. <laughs> Thank you for being awakened. Uh, it's about, uh, you know, three o'clock here in the morning. <laughs> I feel sleepy, so I thought maybe you are. Uh, be patient, I won't be long. <laughs> We can be and should be the example of love, like giving, caring, and harmonizing so that when others think of us, remember our names, they would feel happiness, love, comfort, and even noble. And their good quality will shine forth. We should not be the source of burden, A misery to others in their thoughts, deeds, and speech. We have to be the source of inspiration, of nobility and love, especially if we have been shown how by others' example. If we have love, all good will come our way. We can start to love now, today, and continue tomorrow into the future. Love yourself, love your family, love your neighbors, love all around us. Without love in our heart, we are almost nothing. Just a burden to ourselves, to loved ones, and society. Love is not a word on our lips. Love must be our feeling inside, an action translated outside. Love the animals, we be veg. Love the earth, we go green. Love the world. Save the planet. I hope God will take into consideration <laughs> our sincere prayers. Hmm? Then we can save the planet. But we should all be sincere and work together in unison and one goal. Let me tell you why we should be veg. Not because we want to save the planet only, but it is the ingredient, the main quality, the main power to save this world in this critical situation. You see, eating animal flesh means we are decreasing our love in our being from our 
a structure, holy structure. We are born from God. We were holy. We were true humans. We were true children of God. But if we eat the animals, then the mixing of blood type and genetic code between humans and animals makes us lose our status as the crown of creation, as true humans. As pure humans, the children of God, we are under direct connection with the light, with the mighty master power of the commanding center of the universe. We have absolute command over all under heaven because we were pure and were children of God. But as we keep putting different elements into our beings, even physically, it will affect our spiritual structure as well. Because we became mixling, mixing, a mixing structure, not pure. We became hybrid, vulnerable to attack from the dark force because we are not pure anymore. Thus, this kind of mixling creature could be annihilated because this mixling creature sends a very confusing energy confusing message into the center of the universe. So it could be annihilated because it's not recognized as pure human. So we could be eliminated out of physical realm to be recycled, to be screened out for pureness again and to be reused. But this process can be very painful and torturous over long periods could be hundreds of thousands of earth years. Please help me to stop this. We don't want to be annihilated. We don't want to be screened out. I would like very much to be romantic. Well, I'm sorry, I just came out of many hundreds of hours of meditation. <laughs> okay, you be romantic for me. I become the ascetic so that you can be romantic at home. Just as even the best doctor even needs the patient's consent to save them. We need your help, okay? I need the demonstration of love. Just 1% more love for the world. Love for your children, love for all species, enough so that we will sacrifice our taste for the animals' meat and related unmerciful products. We have to show love in a grander scale, not just a romantic love for our family members. We should keep that because every kind of love is sacred. Every kind of love will emit some beautiful, positive energy to protect us and to protect loved ones and something around us. So if each one of us gives more love into the surroundings, uh, extend it like more, a little bit further than family, and enough of that love, that will make up for the 100% love power needed to dissolve the greatest threat to our survival. I already saved 99%, but the 1% is absolutely important. It's from you, your 1%. Please give more love, so that as long as I am still here, the sun will not flare, the universe destructive force will stop. Then we have time for plan B and plenty, plenty more romance. I might go back to my husband again, be romantic again, if he's still available. <laughs> I trust you, the romantic, beautiful earth people, to understand this and make effort to save our world because you know already from all the media and scientists' reports that we need more time on this planet to be romantic, okay? Have big love, big, 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 the bigger the better. 
left all that you see around you. I normally wouldn't disclose this. I would not even talk about this, especially on such occasion like today. But the time is urgent. We have nothing to lose. Just replace that piece of animal's dead carcass instead with tasty, healthy, plant-made protein of all types. Be vegan, make peace. That's all we have to do. And love, okay? <laughs> love as much as you want. Just don't make war. <laughs> Thank you so much. God bless us all. Be vegan, make peace, do good deeds, heaven Godspeed. For more details and free downloads, please visit suprememastertv.com and for full channel listings, suprememastertv.com forward slash worldwide. Because we are in love, the earth is so ravishing. Because we are in love, the world becomes joyful. I believe only in love. I believe. Lacks meaning Even if this world Is leveled to the ground I believe Only in love I believe Just to love each other Loving is enough Then our souls Will flourish assured Our hearts will not shiver Despite the raging storm Heaven, everywhere is heaven, everywhere is heaven. I believe, I believe only in love. I believe only in
suffering.